everybody, it's your friendly digital technology librarian, Christy here. We are coming up on Independence Day weekend. July 4th is, of course, this coming Sunday. So I wanted to put together a little list of films for the 4th. Those are films that hopefully will leave you feeling a bit of a patriotic vibe. I've got a number of documentaries in here with varied tones. Some of them are super duper light. Some of them are pretty straightforward. And I have at least one classic film that I think everybody who likes movies uh, about historical figures will absolutely adore. Uh, these are, as always, available entirely for free with your Milan Berlin library card. And they're also available on our three digital services. Those are Klebnitz Overdrive, Hoopla Digital and Canopy. Uh, if you are interested in a particular recommendation, you can just go ahead and click on the links that are below in the description box. The timestamps are right next to each of the titles. Uh, clicking on the timestamp will bring you right to that particular recommendation and review. Uh, and without any further ado, I want to go ahead and jump right into the recs. So hopefully you'll enjoy. Okay, my first couple of recommendations are from Klevenet's Overdrive, and the first of those is for a fascinating documentary called The President's Photographer. Now, The President's Photographer is from National Geographic. Uh, National Geographic does some of the best documentaries ever, and this is just one more example of that. I had personally never really thought about the whole position of presidential photographer. I don't know if I just thought the pictures just magically appeared, but this really said, shed some serious light on that kind of an existence. Um, this documentary follows photographer Peter Souza, who's actually been a presidential photographer for literally decades. And it just sort of traces his day-to-day -day life, uh, in particular his day-to-day -day life as he photographs President Obama. Uh, because we're following, following Souza, who is following Obama, we get all of these behind the scenes glimpses of life in the White House while we're also learning about, you know, life as this lifelong observer of, I guess, American history as it happens. Um, we get to talk to Sousa, we get to hear his thoughts, but we also get to hear the thoughts of these big political figures that we see on the news all the time. And... I don't know if it's something about the filmmakers with National Geographic, but there's something so personal about the interviews that they do in this. It, it feels very much not staged at all. It feels very organic. The conversations, the discussions feel off the cuff rather than pre-planned, even though, you know, whether these answers and responses we get are canned responses that they give to everyone, it doesn't feel that way. And I love documentaries that legitimately feel very real. I know that all documentaries are supposed to be real by definition, but that's not a feeling that you always get. That's definitely not a vibe that is inherent simply because of the medium. Um, what I loved, I think, the most about this was the way that the documentary is about Peter Souza. It's about the office of the president, but I think it's also just about American history and presidential history in general. We get glimpses and pieces of so many different presidents, of so many different terms, of, of different pops of American history and pop culture that happen. And it's all very cohesive. It has this welcoming feel. So if you're looking for a really interesting documentary that is about a position that I feel is not always talked about or that is not by nature um, spotlit all the time, check out The President's Photographer. It's really, really really a quick watch and an entertaining watch at that. Uh, plus it's got such great information about a topic I think a lot of people don't know much about. So again, President's Photographer available on Overdrive. My second recommendation from Overdrive is for a documentary called Hamilton One Shot to Broadway. If you couldn't guess, it is all about the doc the uh, hit musical Hamilton and it just gives this great sort of behind the scenes backstory about how the musical came to be in the first place. Um, I think when we think back about 
um, founders history in particular, we have a very specific idea of what it would look like. I mean, this was not a group of supremely diverse people just by nature of the times and who was here and who was involved. So how did we end up with a multi culty cast that is much more exemplary of today's America than 1776's America and, and, and periods around that time? Um, and this is really one of the concepts that gets gets really expanded during this entire documentary. I love how this particular film really traces Lin-Manuel Miranda's thought process through the whole thing. And the interviews are really, really fascinating. We talk to Miranda, of course. We talk to his writing partners. We talk to members of the cast who were with the show from the very get-go. And you see how they all were a part of giving birth to this project. I mean, it wasn't just Lin-Manuel Miranda who put this whole thing together. It was a myriad of people and this mul this uh, multi-culty melting pot of a cast and crew created this global phenomenon. And it is definitely a phenomenon. And... Um, rather than focusing on say like the music or on you know the different elements you normally would think of when talking about a musical theater piece it really delves in on the socio-political aspects of things it really uh, shows how those elements meld with the musical elements and it just gives the entire show a whole a way of being looked at from a different angle and I really really loved that I loved uh, being able to see how different pieces of the musical were from its initial concept to where it ended up and I I do think that this one's great for people who are maybe not huge fans of the musical but are curious about how it became such a phenomenon you know, because I have plenty of friends who are not big Hamilton fans, but who are so curious about what it does and how it res resonates with so many people. Because, of course, it does. It's a, it's a, it's a massively popular show. Um, so whether you're a fan, whether you aren't a huge fan, whether you're a big mu a musical buff, whether you're not a musical fan at all, uh, this one I think is really good. It works on a lot of different levels, and um, it's both... It's nods to both history, art, pop culture, all of these different elements make it appeal really, really broad. So if you get the chance, it's a great, great documentary, uh, Hamilton, One Shot to Broadway, available on Overdrive. So I only have one recommendation from Hoopla Digital this week, but it is for a biggie. It's for the classic film, Young Mr. Lincoln. Young Mr. Lincoln stars Henry Fonda and is exceptional. Uh, it Rather than focusing on his latter life and presidency and involvement with uh, the Emancipation Proclamation, this is all about his early life, in particular his early law career and the very first case that he ever really took on. Now, we learn a lot of little bits and pieces about uh, Lincoln's early life, like his first love, um, how he became interested in law in the first place, uh, and in general, just little pieces about his personality. And of course, it's a biopic. There's always going to be like creative license in anything like this, but I do think it leads us to see a more human uh, Abraham Lincoln, I, I, I think because of the history books, because of his position in history in general, most of us have a very specific view of President Lincoln and how his personality must have been. But this really kind of fleshes him out as, you know, an everyday kind of human being. And it's just really, really fascinating, uh, the life that he led before all of the political stuff, you know, 
just being a young man trying to find his place in the world. It has tons of little anecdotes about people he met, about, you know, his personality in general, and I really, really love those elements of this particular film. It also makes the first case that he takes on as a lawyer really exciting. If you've ever watched shows, uh, films like To Kill a Mockingbird, Twelve Angry Men, you know that when done well, courtroom drama is just magic. And I think there are a lot of really magic moments in this movie as well. Um, removing the fact that it's a biopic about Abraham Lincoln, it's just a well, well, well done, incredibly acted film. Um, from I guess the villains, as much as there's a villain in this, from from the characters that play villains to the player, the the love interest actresses to um, Henry Fonda playing Lincoln himself. Henry Fonda is amazing in this, by the way. Uh, all of the performances are solid. They're really believable. Everybody sinks right into those roles and you are right there with them. It doesn't necessarily feel like a biopic. It feels like a well done courtroom drama. So if you are, are interested in history, it'll, it's great. If you're interested in Abraham Lincoln, fascinating film. If you're just looking for a well done courtroom film, this is definitely it. Please, please, please check out Young Mr. Lincoln. It's available on Hoopla Digital and it is a fantastic movie. Okay, moving on to our last recommendations, which are all from Canopy. The first of those is for a a documentary miniseries. It's eight episodes long and from the History Channel called The Ultimate Guide to the Presidents. Now this one is, I would say, a little bit more indicative of your standard television docuseries. It doesn't have like a whole lot of flair and color like some of the things that we've talked about before do, but it is absolutely fascinating with a ton of information in it. It is amazing how much info they managed to cram into just eight hours. And it is 100% I think worth watching simply because you get all of these little anecdotes and details that you probably never know all about the presidency. Um, it interviews a ton of people who are involved in politics now and in recent years it has um, canned interviews from people in the past talking about the presidency. You've got little anecdotes over, you know, the last couple centuries worth of presidential um, archives and things like that. And what I found most interesting is the moments when it focuses on the sort of interplay between the executive branch and the judicial branch and the legislative branch. It does play a lot into that and how the relationships between those three branches affect each individual term. Um, you get glimpses of the tension that different people uh, have between them. You, you get glimpses of how major events in history very much shift the power within those three branches. You get, you know, different challenges that, and, it, and it's, it's really, really quite well done. Um, like I said, it is definitely a little bit drier than some of the other documentaries I've mentioned, but if you're looking for a lot of factual information that you can digest in a fairly short amount of time, because really, 200 plus years of history in just eight hours is a lot of dense info. Um, it's not a hard watch, despite it not being, you know, particularly unique in its style, but it is one that you have to sit down and watch. It's definitely a mini series that you can't just randomly have on in the background and expect to catch all of those details. So if you want something that you can watch when you're looking for time just to sit and learn, um, if you're looking for something that you can really focus in on, if you're looking for something that will definitely teach you a lot about the subject of the presidency, this is definitely one to check out. Again, this is History Channel's The Ultimate Guide to the Presidency. 
Um, it is eight hours long and definitely worth a watch. Okay, moving on to uh, a slightly more, I hesitate to use the word fun because it's not like Ultimate Guide to the Presidents isn't a fun watch, but Ken Burns documentaries I find are always so incredibly entertaining, no matter the subject matter. And this one in particular really, really worked for me. Uh, this is Ken Burns, the National Park series. If you are a nature lover at all, you absolutely, absolutely have to watch this. Um, if you are interested in the subject of national parks, this is the perfect documentary. Um, it's 12 hours long. It's six parts. It is phenomenally filmed. I mean, anytime you're dealing with national parks in general, you know, you're going to be dealing with majesty, beautiful views, um, extraordinary wildlife and Burns's cinematographers are just so good at their jobs. They make everything look gorgeous. And this doc, this documentary series is the perfect example of that. Um, it talks about, you know, the history of the national parks, the whole purpose behind them. It interviews people who are heavily involved in uh, conservationism. It talks to people who are just visiting the parks in general. It, it gives the whole concept of national parks uh, a, a, a living, breathing vibe to it. Um, we get to see pieces of Arcadia, of Acadia. We get to see Yosemite, Yellowstone, Grand Canyon, um, Everglades, um, Gates of the Arctic in Alaska. I mean, you get to see little glimpses of all of these different areas that, you know, are national treasures, really, really, really and truly. And it definitely makes you feel that way as you're watching. Like I said, the cinematography is just extraordinary. And the interviews, they, they flow so well. The people they talk to are so passionate about these parks and about what they mean to the country that it just, it makes you happy that they exist in the first place. Um, so yeah, if you are someone who loves nature, if you're someone who wants to revisit a park that maybe you visited back in the day, if you, that you actually went to, if you want to be able to see that again, um, this is one of those documentaries I think everybody should watch. It's absolutely gorgeous and just, it, it just takes you there. So, uh, please do check out Ken Burns, the national parks. It's available on Canopy and a hundred percent worth the watch. Um, and my very last recommendation for the week is for, um, a little dramatically done documentary series called Liberty. Uh, and it's all about the American revolution. It is a docu documentary. It does, um, bare facts. It doesn't embellish or anything like that. But what it does do is it, uh, dramatizes different scenes. So you get little moments from history acted out. You get to see, um, recreations of different elements of different time periods. And I, I just really love this kind of thing. Um, you know, I'm one of those people who loves going to the little uh, historical reenactment um, museums where you have people churning butter, where you have people um, actively um, working out different problems and, and working at their jobs back from exactly the way that they would have been done uh, back in those particular time periods. So this kind of documentary works for me on pretty much all levels. So it gives you all of the information that you would want to get from your standard style documentary, but it also lends an element of personality and flair to it. Um, I mean, and, and I think you know that going in, even the way that the title cards are stylized, it is a little bit less cut and dried uh, than, say, The Ultimate Guides to the Presidents. 
Um, this one won a ton of awards, so it is like a very legit documentary. It's not, it's not one of those that was just like picking randomly because I like this one more than I like others. Um, it won the George Foster Peabody, uh, award and it just, I don't know, it makes history really entertaining. I think it's great for, um, a lot of different age ranges. So because, it brings things to life. You definitely could have like a younger person watch this and not be absolutely bored out of their minds. Obviously people, people who are adults and want something entertaining rather than just cut and dried will love this. But I think fans of your more straightforward documentaries will totally be able to get into this one as well. Um, so yeah, if you're looking for a documentary that you can watch with a lot of people from different age ranges, who have different interests, but who all are interested in learning a little bit about history, please, please, please check out Liberty, exclamation point, uh, the American Revolution. You won't regret it. It's a fun one and it's an educational one as well. So that is, as I mentioned, my last recommendation for this week. If you have recommendations yourself, and these don't have to be digital recommendations, these can be just uh, movies that make you feel patriotic. Um, please do comment uh, and let us know. We love getting recommendations. I know I really will go out and check out the movies that people tell me to check out whenever I get the chance. Uh, if you have recommendations for future themes that you'd like to see, also comment and let me know about those. Those ones I definitely always love help on. And with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this week's episode. Thank you so, so much for joining me. And hopefully I will see you next week. Bye-bye.